How many people here have already been to 3S before tonight? All right, that's great. That's good to hear. I spent part of my time on the, the all-volunteer board here. 3S is a nonprofit, and we depend on memberships and donations and beer sales. Uh, and so if you're not a member already, in order to keep doing cool stuff like this, we need more members, so please consider doing that. Um, we're going to talk a little bit real quick, the band's going to be on just a couple minutes. We want to talk a little bit about other parts of the series and recognize some important people that were part of making it happen. So first of all, 3S themselves were sort of crazy enough when we brought this idea. They want to do stuff that's multimedia, it's got visual arts and sound, and, and, and in this case, a legacy we want to celebrate about music and art instigating action and and activity and people being outspoken and so that's one of the things I love about 3S which is awesome um, and then we also to tonight want to celebrate the visual exhibits and is going to talk about the uh, photographers so uh, when we dreamed this up I, I love music and I, I'm an art teacher and I love art and they've always been one and the same to me um, and, and the clash brought my politics and, and music and art all together too and I fell in love um, and photography, like going to a live show, there's nothing like going to a live show, right? Um, and I thought it was so important to have that visually represented, not only by having all of you here at the live show, um, but also with some photography of some amazing live shows. So um, we have two photographers that are highlighted out in the lobby. If you haven't checked it out, definitely take a little swing out there um, and check it out. Uh, Kim Maroon is one of the photographers. She kind of got uh, inspired in 2003 at the University of Delaware, and she's got photos out there from about 2003 to 2011 um, from Delaware, New York City, New Jersey, Jersey Shore, uh, Philly, kind of in that area, and just some really, really sweet, beautiful uh, moments. Um, and then JJ Gonson, uh, and Kim's out of Alston, um, and she's taken photos of all sorts of things, not just music. Uh, and JJ Gonson's are those big slam dance uh, pit photos of hardcore shows, which is one of my favorites, uh, and, uh, and and seeing big sweaty bodies up there above the couches just makes me super happy. Uh, and she uh, she's she's fabulous. She uh, runs One's Ballroom in Somerville. If you've been there for a show, it's a sweet sweet venue. Uh, good human being, just like just like 3S is run by good human beings as well. Um, so we're super psyched to have those out there. So check them out and uh, throw them some love if you have a second. <laughs> Yeah, let's hear it for Kim Maroon and JJ Thompson. And Anna Nuttall, besides being a record nerd and an awesome fan of good music, is also the art teacher of my eighth grade students. So how awesome is that? Portsmouth Middle School has people like Anna teaching our kids. I think it's very encouraging, so that's good. Um, so the final exhibit we want to talk about is really the reason that this whole series happened at all. So, how many people have been up to Skeleton Records in Rochester, New Hampshire? Yeah! So, I don't know where Todd is. There he is. So, we go up to Skeleton, and you go up and you see on the walls, you see all this crazy class collection, and Anna and were talking like, man, this should be an exhibit. People should see this celebrating a place like this, and... We talked to Todd, and not only was he crazy enough to say yes and say so right away, he was generous and awesome and helpful and friendly the entire way that we were working on it. And he's, you talk to Todd, hear his story about all these records that he's collected. They, were not, they weren't, weren't from eBay, they weren't from buying them online. He bought them in stores, Japan, all kinds of places in the world. And he's uh, as real deal as it gets as a fan. You won't be able to pry one of them from him. It doesn't matter what you offer for money. He loves this stuff. So I love The Clash. We love The Clash. The whole point of this thing was we figured that there's a lot of other people that love The Clash. But without Todd, we wouldn't be here tonight. So Todd, thank you, brother. All right, and then, and of course, I don't have to tell all you guys how great London Calling is. It's turning 40 years old later this year. I know we all know that. There was a great excuse timing to try and do this. And the other piece of the puzzle that none of this would have happened without 
was uh, my friend Tim McCoy. I know all you guys, know, a lot of you know Tim McCoy. And we said we need to do a live show. The only guy to talk to was Tim. I knew he could want to do it. I knew he could pull, up, pull it off and find the right people who were also Clash fans to, that would want to do it and spend all the time. These guys have been busting their ass to learn all this material just for tonight, to do all this with all of you. They're as psyched as anybody to be doing it, and I can't be more thrilled that we're doing this tonight. So, in just a moment, please welcome Super Black Market Clash City Rockers to the stage. Yeah. 